Also Fan TV here with Heath Pierce. Um, Heath, in case you don't know, is a, a presenter on one of the biggest football uh, channels on YouTube, and that's Kick TV. And Heath also used to play football for the New York Red Bulls with Thierry Henry. That's right. What was that like? Oh, it was an unbelievable experience. Obviously, he's, he's one of a kind. There's, there's a statue right around the corner of us. Um, <laughs> from us that, that shows the kind of legend he is, not just here, but when he came, he brought all that experience to the New York Red Bulls. He was an incredible teammate, an incredible player, and now, uh, you know, an incredible friend. Mm. What, what was he like, like, you know, at that stage? Because, you know, you, you know, it's no disrespect here, but you'll get like fans saying, ah, he's got to have a little retire, just going to take it easy. But did he still train hard, work hard? Absolutely. He's a, he's a true professional. You'll never hear anybody around here say that Thierry took days off, that he took sessions off, that he took matches off. He was always driven. He was always single-minded about what his job was and wanted to be the best player he could be. That's obviously why he achieved all the things that he achieved in his career. Um, a lot of people have that argument, but even if they did suggest that, he still put up incredible numbers in, in the mm -hmm. MLS. And now he's created a movement of a lot of guys coming at a younger age and not coming at 36, 37, but mm -hmm. arriving to the league with some legs left. And, and he, he proved that he didn't just go to retire. He, he went there to mm -hmm. help grow the game. He went there to help contribute to the game in the U.S., and, and he did just that. And the MLS is growing, isn't it? I mean, you've got Manchester City have got over there and got another team now in New York, uh, the New York City team. Yeah. Um, David Beckham at the moment is trying to get a team going there. You've got all these, all these um, teams emerging. Plus, you've got some very good teams with some very good support. I mean, I've, I've got a, um, a guy that uh, we, I speak to on a regular basis, and he's uh, Orlando Lions. Okay. And he sent me some videos of the support, and I'm like, hey, they're on it. Yeah, it's the, the fan bases are growing. It's incredible. I don't want to upsell it in a way that makes it unrealistic, but I recommend everybody to, you know, we have licensing rights all around the world now the games are shown here in the uk in the evening times which is the perfect time for a fan who's gone yeah. off to a match during the day you get home you relax over a, a drink or something and that mls game will probably that game of the week will probably pop on um but the fan bases are growing the stadiums the atmospheres everything's really moving in the right direction and guys like david beckham thierry Henry, who have helped grow the game have laid that foundation for us to now have a better not just bigger names but a better better quality and product on the field mm. now listen you know again america as a football team in the, you know, in, in, on the world stage, been doing well. I, again, when you went to Brazil, they said that amongst the most supporters came from America. F football, could, could we ever see a, a stage, which I think would be frightening for the rest of the world, but a stage where America do really decide to take this thing serious and say it becomes as big as, say, maybe basketball or, 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 or American football, and then they, you know, it becomes like the number one sport over there? Um, it's tough to predict where that's going to end up in terms of the ranking of the sports in the U.S., but I think one thing that is really cool is the implementations of the academy systems now in the U.S. So guys are playing, they're not local kids training two days a week anymore. They're training five, six, seven days a week at a young age. They're becoming part of a club culture, which helps build that history, that loyalty to that club. You have academy systems implemented everywhere. You have better players coming in. You have better players developing, so hitting, hitting that professional level, more improved, more polished, and all of that stuff's going to help grow the game and help build a better product for us so where it's going to rank at the end of the day i'm not sure but we definitely do have ambitions over time uh to become one of the better nations in the world at, at international tournaments whether that's um you know world cup or or uh, copa america or confederations cup and of course arsenal are coming to america in the summer i mean they've, they've announced that um they're going to be playing a couple of games out there we're, we're, we're really excited yeah. hopefully we will be out there as well and i remember last time i went when uh, they'd done the preseason, we played the, the New York Red Bulls. Not sure if he was playing then, but I was at that game and um, very good game. And the football scene, football support for Arsenal in America, massive. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. And that's what makes me proud to be a fan in the U.S. Mm. The best part about the game coming up this summer is it's in California, which is my home state where I grew up. Mm. And bringing Arsenal, my favorite team, um, it, it's going to be an incredible experience for an all-star game and a celebration of the growth of the game to be able to pull you know, I mean, this is what the dream is here in the U.S., to be able to emulate what we have behind us um, and bring that quality over and bring that level and create a history like Arsenal has is going to be an amazing experience. I'm excited about it because mm. it's in my home state, like I said. I'm definitely going to be there. Even if they tell me I'm not, I'm going to find a way to be there. Um, and hopefully in having guys like Freddie Jumberg, who came over to the league and did well, uh, mm. Thierry Henry, who've come over to, in the league and do well to become ambassadors for Arsenal's help grow that relationship and that fan base in the U.S. Mm.
No, looking forward to it. We, we hopefully should be there as well. Won't have on all these thick coats and, well, maybe the scarf, but maybe be chilling in some shorts and that with you on that day. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I think there's no secret as to why they put it in California in the summertime. Bring some teams over. You can have a little bit of leisure time. California's got a vast size so you can get to the beaches, you can get mm. to the cities and see all that. The quality of life will be great. The weather will be great. So hopefully you guys come over, be in shorts, be in t-shirts, be in a relaxed state of mind and not all bundled up like we are right now. No, no, for real, I'm looking forward to it. Listen, it's been an absolute pleasure. I know that you, he's, this man, he's going to go to the airport now after this, because uh, you're flying back, right? Yeah, I'm flying you're back flying to back. Nor Just tell us uh, once again about Kick TV before you go there. I mean, you're doing great things on that. Yeah, so you guys check it out. It's on YouTube. It's on Instagram, Facebook, all the social media platforms. Kick TV is an, an independent football brand for the voice of American soccer and fans around the world. We cover the global game uh, from our perspective, so go and check it out. And I, th I appreciate you having me on here to help share the game. And, you know, it's great to be with another Arsenal guy. People asking me questions last night at the Tottenham game. That's not... Yeah, what were you doing there? I don't, do, you know what? You know, Off camera, I'm going to have to... Yeah. I know you've got to do your work and everything, but... Off camera, I'm going to have to some serious talks yeah. with you. No, because you know, when you like Arsenal, yeah, you can't too go there. Too, you go there undercover, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we went. I, I didn't. Uh, they they tried to get me to put on a Tottenham jersey. Never. <laughs> they tried to get me to talk about Tottenham. Never. What we wanted to do is give an American, uh, give a perspective to yeah. our to our fan base, which is not just American, but around the world, but a, a voice of our our um, the American game. Um, to show them what two European nights. So we went to Arsenal Barcelona the other night, had an amazing, amazing experience just because it's Arsenal and Barcelona. And then wanted to show them what a Europa League night looks like in North London, two different North London teams. And obviously, you know, I'm leaning towards, like obviously it was night and day better. It was so loud inside the Emirates. It was an incredible experience. I was, I wanted to cry half the game and I wanted to laugh. I didn't want to get any social media out in case I was going to miss a moment. And then, you know, the Tottenham was just that, that's the work yeah. side, you know. Well, you know what? Side. My I'm heart glad, is still strong. Yeah, I'm glad you've done that video because I've never known what football on a Thursday night in the Europa League is like. So I'll make sure I check it out. Subscribe to Arsenal Fan TV. Going into the back stretch and losing some players. I was out at the, actually, actually at, out at the Arsenal grounds yesterday and, it, and some of the injured guys were in. It was a day off for the players and, you know, you see uh, Wilshire, you see Rosicki, you see uh, Cazorla, guys that are contributors. And mm. granted, that number is considerably larger last year this time of year. Yeah. Um, and then you see a Manchester United that's going through that. I think it's a prime time as an Arsenal fan to be excited because I think we should be able to go there and get a result and not have it be a 90th minute winner. We should be able to control that match and do what we do. 